Uh, my name is Dan Rosnova. I'm also an integration MVP. I believe I'm the best dressed integration MVP. <laughs> and uh, I'm from the US. I work with West Monroe Partners. Uh, we're a, I guess, a consultancy in North America. Our European partner is Bearing Point. And uh, I work a lot with BizTalk. I work with a lot of other technologies, too. My background is mostly distributed computing. And I'm actually originally a C++ developer. Um, but today, I'm here to talk about uh, real world BAM implementations. And I'd like to see a quick show of hands. Uh, who here has actually used BAM in production? Oh, yeah, awesome, cool. This is the thing I thought no one used. Um, and uh, uh, Microsoft doesn't think anyone uses it either. Um, <laughs> yeah, good time. Uh, so, uh, you know, BAM is a really important aspect of all of our solutions because this is what our BizTalk solutions look like to like your CFO or your managing director. There is nothing wrong with this slide. This is what BizTalk looks like to them. It's not a black box, it's a black hole. You know, <laughs> things go in and just disappear. So instrumentation is really important to prevent that from happening. It's how we let users know what's going on without having to come to us, without having to go to tour, you know, without having to bother uh, us on vacation or something. Uh, so it's a really important thing for us to provide to, to all of our solutions. It's really our responsibility to do it. Uh, I like to kind of start this piece of this talk with this <coughs> image because uh, signposts are important. Wayfinding, the concept of finding where you're going is important. And I like this particular one because this sign is actually quite accurate. There is indeed a divided highway ahead. This is in Hawaii. But the <laughs> highway has been divided a different way. Um, so uh, the sign is still accurate, but the meaning is different. Um, but it's still useful, whatever. Uh, so when we think about what's wrong with this talk, right? Um, let's not say these things out loud. Just think about what's really wrong from your business customers, users' endpoint uh, standpoint of looking at BizTalk. The biggest things are going to be that there's a total lack of visibility in most solutions. Uh, you know, how do you know if it's working? Well, no one's yelling, right? Uh, okay, that's good, I guess. Um, and really, people only care about what, what they can see. We're visual creatures. We're visual processors. That's how our brains work. It's actually how we store our memories, even. And uh, <coughs> show of hands here, who had a business person, CFO, CEO, managing director, that was actually impressed by an integration they ever did? Really impressed, like amazed. A business person, not a CIO, not a CTO. Wow, that's awesome. One, I'm surprised there were there any. Um, now, these same people, though, they love web apps and, like, mobile apps and stuff like that. I mean, who, who has seen a CIO or a CTO or someone or a CEO go crazy for like an animated GIF on their, you know, internet? <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, I cut your uh, transaction time in half. We have HA, everything's great, you know, uh, and, and what do they care about? Oh, hey, the web guy put a new image on the site. Yeah, awesome. uh, so, you know, it's hard to put a value on the work we do because it's hard to be seen. So, uh, like I'd mentioned, we are visual creatures. And uh, actual research shows that if we are uh, shown something in pure text or shown it as an image, we're twice as likely to retain the concept or recognize the concept of an image than of text. And even of simple images like war and peace and things like that or love. Uh, so this is really deep in our, in our <coughs> primitive brain you know, of how it works. And so it's important to keep that in mind when you're making visualization and instrumentation for your users. And really, BAM is what your users need. You know, uh, if you're not familiar with it yet, uh, what are the pieces of BAM, right? What is BAM? And I don't mean the components. I just mean what's it, what's it going to provide you with. So the first thing is tracking. And not like that evil tracking database that Tord loves so much. Um, I'm going to pick on you all day, man. Sorry. Um, but uh, it does actually use the same technology underneath. We'll talk about that a little, little bit later, but not much. It's scary stuff. Um, uh, it's aggregation and analytics. Analytics is a huge buzzword right now. My company has like 50 guys doing analytics, and they're billing like 120% right now. Uh, so if you just say analytics, you're going to get money from someone in your company. <laughs> <laughs> so just talk about the it's dynamic alerting, which is actually a really powerful feature of BAM, and uh, one of my favorite things of it. I'm really glad now that we no longer have a dependency on SQL 2005 notification services. That's a, that's a good step in the right direction, because uh, this feature actually works now. <laughs> um, and it's a scalable infrastructure. You know, if you've, if you've worked with BAM, and we'll look at the infrastructure as we go through this today, you'll see there's a lot to it, and uh, you get a lot that uh, would actually be pretty expensive to write on your own. Uh, and you get it basically for nothing. And it's code-free if you do it right. 
Um, and finally, it's a self-service portal. So when I say that, you'll hear Microsoft throw on the term self-service BI. You know, that's actually a really big movement right now of giving users sort of self-service ability to, to do things without coming to IT. I personally like it because it keeps people off my back. Um, so they can get what they want and they don't have to bother me and they don't want to bother me, uh, especially if I'm in a bad mood. Um, but, you know, they really need what they need and we'll talk about what they really need. So BAM is all of these things and uh, we're going to take a quick tour through it in just a second. But really I want to talk about how is BAM different from what you're using already, <laughs> you know, or what you might be doing already. Uh, BAM is not what we want to see. I mean, you could make a BAM portal that's for your technical or operations teams uh, or a profile, but really you want to think about it in the terms of the solution you've built or the business process that you've implemented. So uh, our users want to see different things from us. As developers and administrators in this room, what do we want to see? We want to see suspended messages. We want to see any errors. We want to see the health of our system. And we really want to see message box throughput and latency. There isn't an executive in your organization that cares about message box throughput latency. Okay, there really isn't. The CIO might say he cares. He doesn't. He just wants it to work. So they want to see different <laughs> things. And besides, the things that we want to see as technical people, we already have the ideal tool for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be here all week. Um, and now when we look at what do our users really want to see, it's a totally different set of questions. They really don't even care that BizTalk exists. They want to know how many orders they have received, invoiced, shipped, you know, they want to know what's the value of what they've sold this week or month or quarter. You know, they're trying to hit their numbers. That's pretty much what dominates their lives much more than ours. They're trying to see how long it's taking to fulfill orders because that's how they improve their businesses. You know, they have a, it's hard for us to appreciate how complex some of what they do is. It's just complex in a different way. People are much more difficult to manage than machines. Uh, they want to know where in the process is something. So when Bob or Jim calls and yells at them, they know what to say on the phone uh, without totally lying to them. Um, and then they want to know how they can make their business more lean or profitable. Uh, we are lucky enough to work in an industry where pretty much our budgets go up, even if it's only by a small amount every year. Uh, the rest of our organizations are rarely that lucky. You know, except for now maybe marketing's getting a lot of money, no one else is getting money. So they're dealing with less and less and less every year and they're expected to do more. So this is always their struggle. The real crux of all of this is that we are in the business of technology and our users are not in that business. They're in the business of whatever it is your organization does. If it generates electricity, that's what it does. If it sells widgets, that's what it does. So we're gonna take a quick look at a real example that I'll show you the URL for later that you can download and play with of an order processing solution and how you put real value on that in BizTalk or some other integration before where you're receiving orders, purchase orders, you're sending out invoices, and you're sending out ship notices. Um, this would be a classic EDI example. Uh, if you, has anyone never implemented anything like this? I didn't think so. Um, whew, that's really, uh, okay, so you really, you wanna track a few different things here. You wanna track what is happening when, and you wanna track some core data of what's going on. So the first things you wanna track is when are things happening, right? When did I receive an order? When did I send it to my ERP? Uh, if you have a nice ERP, it might be pretty quick. If you have mm, something by a non-Microsoft company, it might not work that well. It may never show up. Uh, so you wanna know where to look if it doesn't get there. You wanna know when those invoices are coming out of your ERP, what the turnaround time is. That's gonna tell you, you can tell your business user a little bit about the workflow, the human workflow process inside your ERP. So we're adding instrumentation to something that really kinda has nothing to do with BizTalk. We wanna know when we actually deliver those invoices to the customer who ordered them. You know, there might be an SLA around that. There's certainly in the US SLAs around this next one, and that's about when we send the actual ship notice. You know, we have to send in a certain amount of time, and usually in the US at least, it's before the arrival of the invoice, the ship notice. Our EDI rules are a little different than the ones over here, and they're not very flexible. Uh, but more importantly, uh, we want to know a little bit about the order itself too. Easy stuff, content of the message. We all are pretty familiar with that. So we've got two sets of data here, milestones and, and actual business data. But really it's all about measuring stuff. <coughs> because as uh, my great friend and hero, <coughs> W. Edwards Deming, anyone know who Deming is? Yeah, anyone doesn't know, okay. That which cannot be measured cannot be managed. This guy. Was, uh, he is the reason for the large part why the Japanese attained the reputation they have as the highest quality manufacturers in the world. Uh, no offense to anyone here who disagrees with that. But uh, he went to Japan after the war and helped them rebuild all their industries. 
Uh, if you have ever been on an Agile or Lean project, anyone in the room? Yeah? You have a direct link to this guy because that continuous improvement stuff came from that. If you think about like an Agile or Lean software development methodology, it's all about sprints, about burn rates, about measuring how the team is doing, and then improving the performance of the team. So Agile is like BAM for a development team. So let's look at what this basic solution is going to look like. Again, super easy. This is a messaging only BizTalk solution that you can download and install. Uh, it's got two receive ports for web services, uh, a send port for WCF, and two uh, send ports for files, I think. Um, I've actually written a mock ERP because I didn't put in a vision in a downloadable demo. Uh, Microsoft didn't want me to do that, um, and I didn't want to do it. Uh, so we're going to make BAM for this, and it's going to be three easy steps. First, we're going to have to create an activity in Excel. We're going to have to create the view in Excel. And then we're going to have to bind the solution uh, to, to our <coughs> BizTalk solution. So the BAM to the BizTalk solution. This isn't too bad. Uh, but we want to, before we start, again, you know, the important thing about BAM is don't think about your BizTalk solution. Think about your business process and work your way backwards to your BizTalk solution. So think about what it is we want to see. Well, we want to see some information about the order, like the total, where it came from. Uh, you know, a reference number for it, which will be very conveniently the same throughout the, uh, the demonstration. Actually, in EDI cases, it is. There's always a reference number in EDI. Um, and uh, then some milestones. We already talked about the milestones. So right now, we'll take a quick look about how this actually plays out. <coughs> building this. Everyone use the, uh, the Excel plugin for BAM before? Yeah? OK, cool. So this shouldn't be too new. If you haven't, oh, no, go back. If you haven't used this, it's pretty easy. It's uh, unfortunately only works with 32 bit Excel. Hopefully, someone will fix that. <coughs> you just go to the, your add ins, go to BAM, and here I'm creating a new activity. Again, we start with the activity. The activity is the root of everything here. Um, I'm going to give it a name, some simple name. And I'm going to go and start putting in milestones, like when did I receive an order? That's a pretty easy milestone. Um, resolution on that? Okay. Okay, um, and then after that, I'm going to want a few things like order total. You can see I can pick different types in there, so I'm just picking a decimal type. And uh, then I'll go back and add a few more things like the, the PO reference number. That's going to be an important one, as I mentioned. Uh, I probably want a few other things like the buyer zip code. You know, it's the key pieces that my business users want to know. I'm really looking at this from their standpoint, not from ours. If this was me, it'd be like message ID, whatever, you know, if we were doing this from a technical standpoint, but we're not. So I'll go through the rest of these, find a few more. And so now we need to think about our view, right? The activity is just what are the data points? So it's like, really, you'll see it in tables later. It's the basis of what are the data points. Now we want to think about the analytics. There's a buzzword again. Yeah, yeah. People love this stuff, believe me. Just sell it to them, right? Um, so what's the status of the order? So our order, you'll see the schema in a little bit, it doesn't have a status in it. Its status is where in those six stars it is. You know, that's the status. That's the closest we have. So we can actually use BAM to assign a status, a, a text status, to that order based on which milestones it's gone through. How long does it take to fulfill an order? Uh, how long does it take to invoice? You know, what is the total account of orders I've gotten? You know, what are my max and min fulfillment times? So these are like KPIs, right? These are the, the root of like an SLA at a business level, not technical. <coughs> so now if we look at making those in Excel, and believe me, as a C++ guy, Excel is my favorite tool in the world. Um, yeah, <laughs> with its non-resizable windows, it's awesome. Uh, so uh, now we're going to go and create a view. You can have a view that spans activities. I'll actually probably upload the original sample to this, which had three view or three activities in one view. Um, and now I can actually go in and start adding things. Like in this case, I'm going to do a duration. So I want to say processing time. Like how long did it take from when the ERP got the invoice to or the order to the time that it sent out the invoice? So this is pretty easy. I just pick my two uh, milestones. I can pick any two milestones within that activity. They have to be in the same activity. That's why all this stuff is in one activity right now. I could make a second BAM that's not, but uh, for this type of analytics to work, <coughs> all needs to be in the same. And I can pick the duration. I'm going to create a second one here, too. And the duration, uh, usually you do hours or days. I put seconds because my demo's running really fast. And it's, not a, it's, it's not a division, so it's done really quickly. <coughs> Although NAV's not too bad. I get like six seconds on my US NAV stuff. Um, and now we want to do this progress dimension. This is what I talked about for the status before. So the progress dimension is really just how do I make these milestones be something that is easier to read and understand. 
You know, if you go to one of your business users with that chart of the six stars on that flow and say, well, just look for these timestamps. You know, you'll know where it is if you look for these timestamps. They'll probably throw something at you. Um, at least my clients would. Um, so you don't really want to do this. Here we're going to impose structure on this by saying the order, the progression in which these happen. And this isn't really well documented with BAM. Play around with it a little bit and you'll figure it out. It's just a cascade. It just cascades down. You can put milestones in different stages. You give them a label. It's really that easy. Now we can do other things like averages. So you can make measures. We did a dimension was the first one. Now I'm doing a measure. And so this is going to be my max or min fulfillment time. And you can see there are aggregations for that. This is a really cool part of BAM. It's actually going to create an analysis, an SSAS cube for us inside of SQL. Uh, this, that's actually a lot of work if you've never done it. Um, and this is a great shortcut for it. So I can pick any of my you know, uh, data types from there, any of my track <coughs> data, and choose to do an analysis uh, dimension on it is, is really what this comes out to. Well, this is a, not a dimension, but we'll see a dimension in a second. Uh, this is an aggregation. So uh, I'm going to put a few in here. I think I put like six, six five or six different, uh, I think actually four maybe in this demo. Because uh, I just want to see some basic averages. You can go back through, add the same things through uh, as many times as you want. Uh, this is uh, SSAS. I mean, SQL's powerful now. You can, you can abuse it as much as you want. So put a bunch of stuff in. This is where we start to get a little more interesting. I can do things like put in a, uh, uh, a different type of dimension, like the order. Uh, what did I put here? Size. Oh, this is my favorite. So I can do a range dimension. Order size. Think about like how do people think in the business world, right? How much money did a client pay me? How important is their time to mine? Uh, so this is a good way to do that. I can come in here and say on the next video that uh, <coughs> I want to make the order be, uh, you know, if it's above a certain dollar amount, then I want to call it large. If it's below, you know, some range, I want to call it medium. And if it's really cheap, I don't care if you yell and scream at me. I'm, you're going to go at the bottom of the pile before I give you time. So this is how I'm doing that. Uh, and it's an easy way to get through there. And then in the next piece here, which I just did, was making a data dimension, which is kind of the really cool part. This is where you get the deep cube stuff. And literally, I point and clicked through and got a data dimension out of that for zip code. Uh, postal code, I guess, is what I should have called that. And here I can drag these pieces on. I've apparently sped back up now. Um, and uh, I can put year on the left. Uh, put uh, zip code on the top. I can start dropping in the aggregations I put in. And you can see why this is in Excel now, because it's actually made a pivot table. Like, that's not a BAM thing. There we dropped out of BAM uh, add and we went right into a normal pivot table. The cool piece is that you can connect Excel right back up to that pivot table later, which we're going to do and see some cool stuff out of it. I'm not showing you how to save the Excel file, because I really hope everyone knows how to do that. Um, so now we need to deploy a tracking file. There are two ways to do that. I guess I could have showed you. You could save it as an XML file. Um, I'm just saving it as an Excel file. It's easier that way for me. Uh, and then you need to deploy the tracking profile. My favorite piece about this, however, is that it's command line. Um, it's uh, located in the BizTalk install tracking. So our visual you know, uh, instrumentation uh, platform is using the command line to do it. Uh, do yourself a favor if you're working with BAM and add that path to your command line path. It's going to make your life easier. And it's one line to deploy that. Uh, it takes a few minutes if you're, depending on your network, a few seconds. And uh, this is where BizTalk actually goes, or BAM infrastructure goes, and creates all that stuff inside of SQL, which we'll look at in just a little bit. Uh, so there are going to be tables made in several databases. There's going to be the cube made. There's going to be some SSIS packages made. We'll look at all those things. So now we have to bind our solution. And we really have a choice of two ways to bind our solution here. So we have our BizTalk solution, and we have our BAM activity and view. So these are two pieces. We need to tie them together. First way is through the tracking profile editor. Second way is through the API. The API always ends in pain. Don't use it if you don't have to. Who here has used the API before? Yes, and who had an easy time using the API? Really? <laughs> I've been doing this 10 years, and I shot myself in the foot last year with it. Um, <laughs> I gotta get some lessons from you. Okay, so always use the TPE. There's a few reasons for it. Uh, the TPE will bind to a bunch of a bunch of different things that are a little harder to do with the API. Uh, you can bind to like an orchestration schedule. Not my favorite thing to do, but useful. Uh, to message content, very useful. Uh, to message context, so things that you know the metadata of the message that's good. Uh, and to messaging properties, and we'll see some of these in just a second. 
The other thing is that this TPE is really sort of the, the sandbox that we can play in, just like BizTalk's a sandbox. So it's kind of frustrating there aren't other shapes in the orchestration designer that you can put on and do crazy things you want to do, like spawn new threads and stuff. There's a reason for that. You know? So there's a reason the TPE looks as limited as it looks. Um, I'm not sure why it looks as old as it looks, but the functionality is there. And it's because it's trying to keep you from hurting yourself in the long run. So it's a good tool to use. Uh, the other is that it can bind to many sources concurrently, which I guess the API could do as well. But here you can visually see, OK, what is bound where? Visually keeping track of an API implementation for BAM is impossible. You know, you just can't tell. You have to do like code analysis to figure it out. Uh, and then the other thing is that it allows changing your BAM without changing your solution, so without deploying code, you know, without doing a deployment. Um, if you think about our big challenge for, for integration is coupling, right? We want to loosely couple everything. So if you're using the API and you're putting expression shapes in your orchestrations, you're tightly coupling your monitoring to your solution. So now you can't change one without changing the other, or you limit how much you can change. And TPE lets you totally decouple those. All right, so now, if we get to my video, okay, now I want to show you who's used the TPI, TPE before. Good, good, awesome, <coughs> okay. Uh, we're gonna do some basic TPE stuff in here, and then we're gonna do some more advanced TPE stuff. Um, basic TPE, really <coughs> easy, just open it. I dock mine because I use BAM a lot. Um, you can see there's the default <coughs> view. I'm kind of screaming through it, and I can pick my, my events that I want to bind these to or want to associate this data with, and uh, then go in and, and see all the uh, BizTalk assemblies, so things that have any BizTalk artifacts in them. Right now, I'm going to go to the messaging payload because that's what I'm interested in binding this with, and I'm going to browse to the bottom of this. Don't look at my customers. Um, I shouldn't have said that because now you can. Okay. Um, <laughs> And now I'm going to go to the bottom of this in my internal schema. It's always good to bind to your internal stuff for BAM. Now I'm going to take my purchase order schema. And here, I can actually see my schema. This makes sense, right? And I just drag it right over to associate it with that uh, part of the tracking profile. This is all pretty easy stuff. I'm going to whiz through these really quick. I'm going to do the billing zip code, a few other things. You know, the big drawback to this is you can't do repeating elements in your schema. So if you think about how the TPE works ahead of time, it'll help you structure your schemas to be easier to <coughs> um, Something which would be cool to have some tools to do, but it is what it is. So here I'm tracking to the other two schemas in my solution. Remember, I have three messages flying back and forth, and I'm uh, binding, I think, the invoice number and then the shipping or tracking number. So uh, this is pretty easy stuff. We're, we're pretty easy here. I'm going to skip the rest of this uh, in just a second after I show the the first challenging thing that happens here. Um, and now what I need to do is do my milestones. And the milestones are going to be bound a little differently. They're going to go to those messaging properties. These are just standard BizTalk properties that any message in BizTalk is going to have. Uh, they're not the most useful. Some of them actually are. Interchange ID can be really useful. But port start and end time are useful. Um, it's important to know for the TPE or for BAM that that port start and end time, it, it works a little differently. On a receive port, I don't think the start time is actually going to be populated when you receive because uh, it, it doesn't know about that. The adapter only knows when it finished. You know, so uh, there's other oddities about this that I'll explain along the way. So I'm just dragging these over. So start times on when I sent and uh, end times on when I received. And now I need to associate, I need to, to tell uh, this profile, where does this come from? So here's the opportunity I have to look. This is where naming conventions in BizTalk will save you or drive you mad. Um, I can look at my global catalog in a non-resizable window. Uh, for um, where I want to bind this. <coughs> and I want to bind this to uh, specific receive ports. So for receiving the order, it's my, uh, that port. Uh, for sending it to the ERP, it's a WCF send port. Uh, for all the other steps in here, you know, there are specific ports. I know my solution, so I can figure out where those are. Um, I'll skip the rest of this, because this is just binding that we've hopefully all seen. Any <coughs> questions on this stuff yet? Good. Not off the reservation yet. <clears throat> okay, now if we ran this as we have it, all bound together and stuff, we would actually get six disparate tracking events <coughs> in BAM because they're not tied together. So every time some port gets one of those or one or more of those pieces of data, it would create a partially complete record. What we really need to do is we need to use continuations to tie these together. And this is where the TPE starts to get really useful. If you click on the right part in it, that's user error. Um, so here, I create a new continuation. 
And this is also where it gets confusing and easy to get lost. And I'm going to name that continuation something. It really doesn't matter what you name it. Um, what does matter is the data that goes in it and then the name of the continuation ID that follows it. So a continuation is just a marker to say, hey, I'm waiting for something that's going to match this. And it's going to keep some data and some tables that we'll look at in a minute uh, to keep them together. The continuation ID, important to know, has to have the exact same name as the continuation that it's matching for. If you look in the database, it actually uses the name and the data concatenated together to match them up. <coughs> so I'm going to make a few continuations here because I want to, I have several legs in this journey. I actually have more than three legs in this journey. I kind of don't want to talk about that, but I guess I will. Uh, the first is I'm receiving a message and then I'm sending to the ERP. That's actually one leg because they're separate ports, you know, separate messages really. Uh, the second is that I'm actually receiving uh, a message out of the ERP, an invoice, and that has to continue from that first leg also. So I, in this whole thing, I actually need five continuations, not three. So I need continuations for the time that it's stuck in the ERP. So I'm creating three here. We'll just start with that. Uh, the finished solution, which is already up on my site, you'll see a link at the end, has all five. Pretty simple concept, just no typos. Do the same data, it's fine. Other thing to know, continuations have to be seeded at the moment that the activity starts. So the moment the activity is created, you have to set up all your continuations right then and there. That's kind of a bummer, but it's the way it works. Uh, so just know about that. And know that if you have events that won't finish, then you will have data build up in your BAM database that will never go away because it's not complete. It's still waiting for a continuation. So I'm buying the rest of these here. Check our time. Yeah, I got a little time. Um, and probably jump through the rest of this. And any questions on continuation? Who's used continuations? All right, cool. Nice. All right, now my favorite part, deploying the tracking profile, which you can point and click and do, or there's an awesome tool for it, which is just one, one simple command that just takes the file. Easy enough. A uh, good thing to script into your MSI if you're you know, deploying your BAM with your solution. Also a good thing to do. So now in the solution, and this is documented in the, in the actual uh, zip file that has everything in it, I can run it and get <coughs> the data out in three easy steps. There's a mock ERP, which is a, a everyone loves console application, <coughs> I should have done something else. Uh, and then a mock load, this is gonna throw 10,000 messages at it. It's a messaging only solution, so even like your development machine should be okay with it. Uh, you need to look at the BAM portal then <coughs> and see what's in there <coughs> and look at the aggregations. Uh, which will be funny because there's nothing in there. You gotta run a job to make the aggregations run. Uh, I just put this here so everyone knows what it is. It's a little easier. You can run an SSIS package from the command line uh, with this sort of syntax. And then, if you look back at your aggregations, you'll have some data that looks cool and we're about to do that now. Okay, BAM portal, my favorite part of BAM. Okay, I mean, um, okay. <laughs> So you go in and you can see, so this site, this, this single order view was created because of deploying that activity. It has nothing to do with the TPE. Uh, but now it will have data because I apply the tracking profile. So on the left I can pick those pieces. Again, you need to be in compatibility mode for this, which is getting more and more painful. Um, we use the GPO to push out to all of our users that puts this site for their uh, company in compatibility mode. Not the easiest thing to pull off. Uh, so here as I look at my results, kind of easy, you know, uh, it's just a basic portal. I can click through these things. I can sort on the headers, uh, which I think I'm about to do here. This is actually still running while I did this because since it was 10,000 messages and I'm on a VM. Uh, and then I sort again, I think, and I get some that are finished. And I can click on any of these and go see the details. Like here I can see a complete BAM tracking record. I've got my six milestones <coughs> filled in after time intervals. I've got my... Uh, uh, data in there, including things like the status, right? There is no status in that schema. Um, and the aggregations like the, or the measures like the total processing time. <laughs> the cool thing about this portal, and I really do show this to a lot of users, and you can change how it looks a little bit with just CSS, um, so it's not that bad. But uh, the cool thing about this is it really helps you get sort of a first level support uh, capability to people without having to mess with your IT department. So here, this is pretty easy, right? Most of your users are smarter than we think. They're gonna figure this stuff out. Uh, just put together some ands. You know, it's context, it is actually context aware. So if you have a, a milestone, you'll get time comparison features, like uh, in the last, that's actually really cool. Um, here I, I <laughs> got frustrated. 
because my I'd run this earlier, so there was nothing in the last hour, so I went back to Dave. Um, and then you can add these things together uh, and build expressions out of them just like we would as a filter. Uh, but these expressions can be a lot more powerful because we have more operators here. So I can say things like uh, if uh, a field is empty. So if I've received an order and uh, in the last hour and uh, it, it never had a, a delivery time. Okay, well that's good. I want to know about that. Um, I can do things like a value greater than. Okay, that's good. Um, I can do things like PO reference number. So hey, Jim, where the hell is my PO? You know, I can go, okay, well, Jim's yelling at me. I gotta find my PO. And it'll come up on here and I can click through it and see in that status, where is it? You know, I don't have to guess because of some time. I can see clearly in the status where it is. Now we get into the aggregations. I should have mentioned this, embarrassing. Always rename the pivot table from pivot table one. That's, uh, I make that mistake all the time. Um, someone corrects me. So when we actually look at the aggregations, this is kind of cool, even though it does look a little dated still. Um, I can see the chart on the bottom is actually reflecting of the data in the table at the top. And as I click through this, like if I expand the time here, the chart's gonna change because the data being displayed is gonna change. So I dragged a piece off from the data and it changed the chart. And now as I expand the, uh, the time dimension here, I can actually see that the chart changes and adds more pieces to it. So this is a cool interactive piece, and importantly, there is a link here for Excel, which all of your users love. They really do. It's their favorite thing. Um, I wish I was kidding. It's, it is. Um, and uh, then they can just open it in Excel and start manipulating this. This is a view right to the analysis cube on SSAS. It's going to have an embedded connection there. It uses uh, SQL authentication. Window, I mean Windows authentication. So you're pretty good to, to expose this and people use it. They can also change this view as much as they want, even in the portal. <coughs> Most of my users, they never really mess with this part of the portal. They open it in Excel, they save the file locally, and every day they can open up that file, and just hit refresh, and it gets the data. You know, right when they open it, clear off the analysis cube. So alerts are really cool because they can help our business people sort of build their own process around things. So for anything that we looked at here, the same, uh, that did not start, for any of the same features that we saw earlier, uh, we can actually come in here uh, with the same queries that we used and we can make alerts based on those queries. So I can put together things like, okay, if a large order comes in from these zip codes in New Jersey, because I know there's a lot of shady people there, I want to be notified so I know it's not fraud. Um, so <laughs> if anyone who's been in Jersey probably knows about that. Um, so, uh, you know, you can get a lot of power this way. They could save their queries, they could set alerts. Setting the alert, which I'll do here in a second, is really easy. But what you're doing is you're empowering your users to build stuff for themselves. You know, it's getting one step closer to us focusing on what we should be focusing on and what we're good at, and them focusing on what they need to be focusing on. That's why they love SharePoint, right? That's why you, people love SharePoint, because they can do their own things with it, and they don't really need to come to us. We run the platform, and they do whatever they want on it within some sort of reason. Uh, so here I'm actually gonna set an alert at some point now. Come on. My cadence on this was terrible. Wow. Um, and so now when you set the alert, it's going to bring up a pretty easy dialog box. Not much in here. I can put in whatever I want. It's, there's really no rules around this. The only real rule is that I can actually let people see alerts. Like I might not want to let people see the alert for when we're, you know, furloughing someone and we're going to turn off all their access. So I might keep that alert private. Um, Whereas here, you know, I'm going to, in this example, make the alert public, let people subscribe to it, and you can subscribe through email or file. File is actually really interesting for us because you can daisy chain BizTalk Solutions use file adapter to read those and do all si sorts of crazy <coughs> stuff. Um, although you can drive yourself mad doing that. Uh, and here, I'm just going to put in my email address, and this this alert, when it uh, fires, will fi uh, send me this email, and it's a link right to that exact uh, BAM event. So it writes that filter, so that, that query. Uh, so that's kind of cool, and it's smart enough not to send alerts multiple times, things like that. So this is actually a pretty good uh, platform. It, it beats writing this yourself or rolling your own. The cooler part, however, is that in the aggregations, you can actually click in any of these cells and set alerts here by right-clicking in them. So I can do the same exact thing. The window's gonna look a little bit different because I have different features. And here I'm gonna have things like thresholds that I can set. So this is gonna be an aggregation threshold. <coughs> when it uh, exceeds this value, you know, send this alert. And it'll, it's smart enough not to send the same alert multiple times, but if I say customer X 
orders or any customer orders a million dollars of something a month, I want to know about it so I can take them to dinner or something like that. So this is, you know, again, this is, now you're getting into some seriously complex uh, alerting and eventing stuff. Uh, again, without our need. The coolest part too is that you can, I don't think I show this, but you can actually click on the bars and set alerts visually based on the bars. So you can say, when this crazy spike happens, let me know about that. Nice feature to have. Let's see. And then uh, we'll talk briefly about my favorite feature in BAM, um, which is uh, pretty good. And that's that uh, there's some cool little features in there. Like if I clicked on that piece earlier, there's an assistance button. <laughs> and I can uh, type whatever I want in here. And uh, it's actually going to log this into BizTalk for me um, in, in Tord's favorite way. <laughs> and uh, that's going to be through the event log. <laughs> so if you want to mess with your admin, you can just start spamming them through the BAM portal. <laughs> like, hey, what are you doing? You know? And there it is in the event log, see? <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's to you, my friend. Um, okay, and so this is great stuff, right? This is kind of cool. But I know what you're thinking. How does all this crazy magic work? Um, it's, it's pretty complex. <coughs> you probably don't want to know how it works, but I'll go through it real quick anyway. There's a lot of infrastructure involved. There are several <coughs> databases. There are views and tables that are dynamically created. There are two SSIS packages. And then there is TDDS, which I don't know if you've ever run across. I hope not for your sake. But somehow equates to the BAM event, service, uh, event bus service, um, which is actually the same way the tracking data works, which is why I'm guessing it's called TDDS. Uh, but let's go through the basis of this. So tables and views. In the BAM primary import and the BAM archive database, you're going to get some tables that you'll see right away <coughs> if you deploy your uh, activity. Don't ever use them. These are the tables for this particular activity. <coughs> Uh, don't ever use them because they're going to change and they're not going to have all your data. We'll walk through that in just a second. There are also views created. A lot of views actually if you're using aggregations. Uh, the views are safe to use and that's what you're going to want to use. Sort of the reason why it's like that is because the SSIS packages are, that are made. Uh, there are two packages made I mentioned. One's bam underscore dm underscore view name. Uh, this is actually for uh, data management or data maintenance. This is going to partition the data set and age it off into the archive database. This is actually a really cool feature. Even though there's other ways you could do this in SQL, at the time this was made, this was the only way, and it's still a good design pattern. Uh, because you can choose to either archive this stuff off into the archive database, which means that it's not gonna slow down the BAM portal or any of the infrastructure anymore. You can save it for whatever your regulatory requirements might be, seven years or something like that. Um, and it's uh, gonna do that by partitioning the tables, so by cutting the tables in pieces. And by the way, with uh, SQL 2012, which uses the Visual Studio 2010 IDE for business intelligence, uh, these packages actually look readable. That's an actual picture of this real package. If you ever opened up the old ones in previous versions, it was just a crazy jumble. It was all in one, one place. You couldn't make sense of it. The other one is an analysis view. Uh, this one actually just processes the queue, and it, it shapes even say what it's doing. It's actually really well uh, easy to follow. Uh, it's pretty simple. And uh, it's, this is what, you know, you probably want to set this up depending on what your users expect to run hourly or something like that. You don't want to run all the time because it'll, it'll hammer your SQL server. So those are pretty easy. Now when <coughs> the maintenance uh, package runs, it's going to partition your tables I mentioned. We'll look at what that looks like real quick. And you want to think about when you want to do this because it's going to partition them every time it runs. So usually you probably only want to run it monthly. So that'd be pretty, pretty normal. When it partitions, it will mark that partition as a certain age. When that partition reaches a, the end of its age window, default of six months, it will be moved out to the archive database. You can change it so it just goes away also, which is a good, uh, good option. The entire completed partition, meaning all completed BAM tracking events, are moved together. Things that aren't completed aren't moved out. Six month time window can be changed with our favorite command line tool, bm.exe. It does absolutely everything for BAM, it's amazing. I think you can send me an email with it. Um, and uh, the BAM uh, data maintenance, this is really kind of what it looks like. It's just putting a GUID on the end of the table. And that's why you don't want to use the tables. Because here is what my tables look like now after I've run it. I have two new tables with a GUID on the end. Very readable too. Um, and it actually goes and updates the views to have a union now. So I can see everything. And you can see it's using no locks, so the performance isn't too bad. Um, not bad. A lot of infrastructure going on here. 
So now, PDS <coughs> bus. Okay, how do I say this? You, you really don't want to know how it works. <laughs> and I mean it. Like, if you ever get to this point where you need to know something's wrong here, call Microsoft, because you're in trouble. Um, if you do want to really know, and if you look in the BizTalk <coughs> uh, message box database, you'll see some tables that start with TDDS. There usually be about eight of them. Uh, the ones that start with an underscore one after that are for, for BAM. The ones with an underscore zero are for uh, tracking data. Do not mess with these tables. You will break something, I promise you. <laughs> Just doing a select will probably break something. Um, conclusion. I want to have a little time for Q&A here. Uh, really, the important thing is that you always need to create BAM for your solutions. It's our responsibility. I mean, it's not that hard to do. It's like testing, okay? It's the first thing that gets cut, but it's probably the most important thing you do. So defend your budget for it. It's pretty easy. If you're using BizTalk, you already have the tools you do. You need to do almost all of it. It's no excuse. <coughs> And when you think of your BAM, again, work backwards. Start with the business process and work back to what the technical implementation is. <coughs> That'll make your life a lot easier. It'll make your users understand it. You don't want to make them dependent on the solution. We, uh, for example, with the BAM we have, we could change the whole thing. We could start using orchestrations, and our BAM wouldn't actually have to change, and our users wouldn't see it change at all. So even if we change a BAM profile around, like the tracking bindings, we don't want them to know it's changed. You always have to create and schedule your BAM jobs or they're just never going to run. You actually have to create a, a job for them and then schedule that job for running. So this will be the equivalent of the backup job that you have to do. Um, and then teach your users to effectively use BAM. Just take a little time, get a few of them together and show them really how to use it, which is going to require you knowing how to use it. So you'll learn a little from them, they'll learn a little from you. Uh, this will actually get you pretty far uh, because it will help you figure out what they're looking for. And then, uh, and I'll show one last piece of this in the end here, is to experiment with using BAM views from a custom portal or tool, like Excel. I actually like connecting Excel up to these views a lot. That's what I'll show at the end here. It's pretty cool. Um, and you can change the CSS so the portal doesn't look like what it looks like. Um, I would definitely think about doing that. So the other thing to know, though, in this solution is uh, sensitive to this, because how I use the continuations is that you can't have separate uh, BAM activities happening that have overlapping continuation tokens. You can repeat the continuation token once it's complete, but not while they're in process, because it will mess up your tracking. It'll, it'll break, actually your BAM portal will break. It'll tell you, I can't do this. And uh, then you have to go in and uh, delete. It's cool, the event log tells you what the GUID of the record is and what to do. It just doesn't do it for you. This is the last thing I kind of want to show you about how much I love, I really do love Excel. Uh, so one thing that you can use here to impress the boss. So I'm using Power Map here. If you've not used Power Map, I would play with it a lot. It's just the same connection that I already got from opening the portal up. And I'm looking at a bar chart in here of my sales displaying over time, which you'll see play out in the top there. And I'm just using the postal code to show where the sales are from. You can use lat long or any other kind of data you have in there. And now I'm rotating this around. This, was, this took me about five minutes to put this together. I should have said longer, but yeah, whatever. And now I'm looking at a heat map from this. So instead of a bar chart, I can see a heat map of where our sales are. So like this is the kind of, I mean, this, I didn't, this is BAM. It's looking at BAM. But it is using that in a way that's going to be much easier to appreciate for our users. And you know, if they say a picture is worth a 1,000 words, that was 30 frames a second for about 25 seconds. So. <laughs> I should have done that instead of writing my book. <coughs> uh, and speaking of the book, there it is. Um, there's the web link for information about this, for this actual demo is on there. You can play with it. Please give me feedback. And uh, thank you very much. <laughs>